so in the mean precipitation topic uh, we have covered the first two methods that is arithmetic mean method and the thesian polygon method in the previous videos now in this video we are going to see the last one that is isoisothetal method and this is the best method okay the most accurate method among these three and the best method so let's <coughs> start writing isoisothetal method so the first question that should come in your mind is what is the meaning of the term isoisothetal okay or isoheight so write down isoheight means or we can say isoheight is a line joining line, line joining points of points of same rainfall or equal rainfall okay now so to understand this we'll draw a catchment area okay so this is the catchment area now in this catchment area uh, what i am doing is i am writing here certain values of precipitation so watch carefully so at this point there is 10 cm at this point there is 11 cm at this point again 10 cm here 10 cm here 9 cm okay so here also one will take 9 cm okay now if you see or if you look properly then the 10 cm values here are repeating here okay so many times we have here the value of 10 cm so if we just draw a line okay if you draw a line which is connecting the 10 cm points okay so the line will start like this 10 cm then again it will go here and then here okay so now as you can see this line this line we can call it as iso height and what is the meaning of iso height point a line joining points of equal rainfall okay so it is a line which is joining the points having equal rainfall now there is one more term here which i want you to just write it down as we are discussing iso height so write down iso nif okay so what is iso nif iso nif is a line joining <coughs> it is a line joining points of equal instead of rainfall it is snowfall so this is the difference between iso nif and iso height so now we are discussing the iso height here that means the lines which are joining points of equal rainfall okay so this is the iso height meaning of iso height okay so what we are going to do is we are going to find out the iso heights so this iso height is an iso height of 10 cm this is 10 cm iso height so similarly there can be another iso heights here okay so let's say this is an 10.5 cm there can be another iso height which is 9 cm so these are the values of iso heights and what is the meaning of iso height it is a line joining points of equal rainfall so we'll give this iso heights the precipitation values that is p1 p2 p3 okay so for reference let's take one more here so this is p4 okay what is the value of p1 here in this case first line 10 cm similarly second 10.5 cm okay so for our calculation part we are taking the p1 p2 p3 and p4 now the area between two iso heights the area between two iso heights we can find it out by using the planimeter so area between two adjacent iso heights two adjacent 
iso heights can be calculated by planimeter so we don't have to go in detail about this just remember this point the planimeter is an instrument which is used to find out the area okay so we can use this planimeter to find out the area between two iso heights so the area which is at the left hand side of this p1 this is an a1 area okay then the area which is present the area which is present in between of this p1 and p2 okay so this area is a2 then similarly the area which is present between this p2 and p3 will name it as a3 this is a4 and this is a5 okay so the entire catchment is now divided into five parts by the four iso heights okay how many iso heights are passing through this catchment area from this catchment area how many iso heights are passing four iso heights p1 p2 p3 and p4 how many areas or we can say how much into how many areas the catchment area is divided into five areas a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 how to find out these areas by using the planimeter so once we get these areas and the iso heights then the formula to find out the mean precipitation that is important to us okay so just before writing that let's write few points about this method so this is the most accurate method most accurate method then in this case topographic topographic factors are taken into account okay it is applicable to both plain and hilly areas both plain and hilly areas so this is the basics of isohydral method so once we have understood what is isohyte and what is the area then the last thing that we have to understand from this topic is to find out the average value of precipitation or mean precipitation okay so mean precipitation by using the isohydral method this is calculated as product of the isohyte precipitation and the area between the two isohydes now just look carefully this p1 is the first isohyte and the area or we can say to the left hand side there is no more isohyte which is present okay there may be some certain isohyte which is present but it is not in the catchment area so in this case we have to neglect or we have, we can say that we have to take only the p1 value so remember this one this point so we have to take p1 multiplied by a1 p1 multiplied by a1 same as the thiessen polygon method now what will be the second term it will be p1 plus p2 into a2 so the second term is equal to p1 plus p2 by 2 into a2 so the average precipitation we have taken between this p1 and p2 multiplied by the area the third term will be p2 plus p3 divided by 2 multiplied by a3 so just let's write it down so that it will adjust in this page so i'm writing it here pm is equal to p1 multiplied by a1 p1 into a1 the next term will be p2 plus next term will be p1 plus p2 by 2 into a2 so it is p1 plus p2 by 2 into a2 the next term will be p2 plus p3 p2 plus p3 by 2 into a3 then the next next term will be p3 plus p4 p3 plus p4 by 2 average value multiplied by a4 okay so up to a4 we have completed now what will be the last term see you can see 
outside this or on the right hand side of P4, there is no more isohyde present. So we will be taking only P4 multiplied by A5. So it will be P4 multiplied by A5 divided by divided by total area. Okay, so total area is A or you can write it as A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5. So this is the formula for mean precipitation. See, I am not giving you in terms of n value. I am taking the example here and from this example only we have taken the values. If let's say there are two isohydes which are present, then you have to modify the equation as per the given problem. Okay. So just understand how we have derived the formula. Then based on that, any number of isohydes if it is given, you can find out the value. Okay. When you will solve the numerical, you will get more clarity about it. So these are all the important points from the isohydal method. So with this now, we have completed the mean precipitation topic. All the three methods we have completed, arithmetic mean method, Thiessen polygon method and isohydal method. So among these three, some important points I will just revise quickly. <coughs> Which is the best method among these three methods for calculation of mean precipitation? The last one that is isohydal method. Okay. Which of the following methods can be used in plain areas? The first two methods that is arithmetic mean method, Thiessen polygon method. In fact, the third method can also be used. But in case of hilly areas, only one method is used that is the isohydal method. Okay, the remaining two that is the first two they are they cannot be used in hilly areas. Then in case of arithmetic mean method, we just have to take the average of all the rain gauge station precipitation values that will give us the direct value. It is the least accurate method. Then Thiessen polygon method. There is a con there is a uh, there is a new concept of weightage. Okay, that is a weightage to a rain gauge station. So that weightage we can calculate by area of rain, area of influence of a rain gauge station divided by total area of catchment. How to calculate area of influence by following the three steps. That is, join the rain gauge station by straight line, draw the perpendicular bisectors, and then find out the area of influence. So we have taken one problem also. One of the important points in Thiessen polygon method is that the sum of the weightages in a catchment is always equal to one. And to find out the mean precipitation, the formula is P1W1 plus P2W2 and so on up to P5W5. Okay. Then the last method is isohydal method. What is the meaning of isohydes? Isohydes means it is a line which is joining the points of equal rainfall. Then what is a line which is joining points of equal snowfall? It is called as isonef. This is an extra point. Okay. Then it is the most accurate method and it can be used in hill areas that we have already discussed. And this is the formula for finding out the mean precipitation by using isohydal method. So that's it with this mean precipitation concept. Now from the next video, we will start the next concept.